Okay, uh, so welcome to today's lab. So today we will try that we can download the sensors data into Python. And also the data actually is in the JSON format so that we will also load the JSON data into uh, Python and also we will do some very simple uh, data analysis. So the website you're looking for is um, this website that that is a sensors website that contains a lot of useful information. Uh, so uh, for example, the, uh, how do you get the keys, the uh, those variables, etc. So before you start, let's create our API key for the sensors. Uh, so for the organization, I just type GMU. And I'm using my uh, GMU website. And I have to agree with the term of the service. And just submit re the request key. And uh, normally in a few minutes, I should be I should receive that key. All right, so let's go to our Educate Classroom. So let's go to AWS Console. And then from there, let's go to SageMaker. So we have already created our instance uh, from the previous lab. So go to the SageMaker instance, which is also connected to our local, uh, to our GitHub. And you can see right now it has been stopped. So that is correct. So we can restart our instance. So we need to stop the instance every time so that we will not waste the credits. And so you may want to pause the video here so that uh, we will wait a few minutes until uh, the instance is ready. And in the meantime, I just checked my uh, email and I find that, OK, so the uh, census just sent out the API key to my email. So that is this very, very long string. So uh, so we will use this string later. OK, uh, while well, we are waiting, so I just also want to show you that I provided a piece of the demo code, demo code for this lab so that you can access from this um, on my GitHub. You can see we will import uh, those two Python libraries so that URL LIB. So that will help us to make the HTML request. We will also we will also use the JSON Python library to load JSON into dictionary object. We will also use the pprint so that we can print the data in a nice format. Uh, so this is where you have to paste your keys that you just uh, received from sensors. So within this string. And this is the URL that we are going to send out so that by using the APIs. So uh, you can see we are looking for the in this code. I'm look, I was looking for the data of 2016 and I was looking at ACS five years and I was looking for this variable. So if you go to the census website, you will know this stands for the total population. And I was looking for the counties that in the state equals number 50 all the counties in the state where the, the state number is 51. So the 50, 51 is Virginia. And then I use this uh, uh, request.url open function to, re to, to receive the response from the, uh, from the census website. And I convert that data, the response into an HTML string format. And if I did receive something from the census website, that means if we do received uh, data from sensors, and I will follow in the, the, this part that I will load the data, convert the data into a string format, and I will print the first. Uh, uh, so this, uh, in, in the dictionaries, I will print the first part of the data. And also for the remaining part, I will use this for loop. OK. OK, so now the uh, notebook instance is ready. So let's first go to go to the lab. So let's first up, update our local uh, repository. So just in case you made some change on the GitHub repository. So we want to make sure that we are on the same page. OK, so here you can see, uh, let's do a pool. And that was success. All right, so now let's open the notebook. 
And so this time we are going to download the data from the sensors. And also on notebook, you can see we have the previous lectures, um, the JSON data, text data from our previous lectures. So let's create a new um, notebook. And we are using Condo um, Python 3. So that that is great. That would be fine for our lab. So and let's call this one um, lab 11. Okay, and let's first let's use a markdown list, give it a title. Um, okay, so lab 11 download the data from Python. Um, okay, so now we can just copy this part of the code. Okay, and we need paste our uh, APIs. So here I just copy the API and re remember that do not copy those spaces, etc. And here let's paste those APIs. Okay, uh, so let's just run this um, code first. So let's see what we are be what we are going to have. Okay, so now you can see it is working. So Again, so this returned uh, 2016 data, and we are looking for the total population for all the counties in Virginia. Uh, so here you can see that uh, the first, the first, the first line is just the variable name, the county name. So those are the headings, and the second one is just uh, the real population, the name of the county, the name of the state and also state code and also county code. OK, so looks like it is working. And I think the latest data is 2019. So let's try 2019, see if we can we can receive some information. OK, yes, great. OK, we did have something that being printed out. OK, so let's just assume that we have the right information. All right. Um, so let's go to our first question. So let's switch this one to markdown. So that is uh, 3.1. So that is a county with most total population. Okay, county with the most total population. So here we can say we can get all the populations by using this piece of code. So let's just copy this code. Uh, actually, we just need to copy and this code. Okay, because we are using the same case and also we are using the same Python library. So this code, you can see here, the V1 is printing out the um, population, and the name variable is a county name. So we basically are looking for the county that has the highest population. So now the, the data is in a for loop. OK, so how can you find out um, the county that has the highest population? OK, so you can think about the, the, uh, the lab that we did earlier and also think to see how we did find out the, the maximal data and also minimal data by using a for loop. So see if you can follow in that example to resolve this problem. So you can pause the video here and also to try it on your own to see if you can find out that uh, find out the solution. Okay, so hopefully you, uh, after looking at those previous labs, uh, you will have a solution. So my solution is that we need a variable to hold, to compare against all the, the population of all the counties. Okay, and after that, so after each comparison, so we just keep the bigger ones. And after all the iteration, after comparing with all the county populations, the the, uh, the final result will be the county has the highest population. So here let's define a variable that called maximal population. Let's give it default value as, as zero. 
we also have the maximal the county that has a maximal population so let's give it as an empty string all right okay so now we are so v1 stand for the population the name stand for the county name we all see that if the max population is less than the v1 okay and we all say okay so then the max p equals the current v1 and also the max county will be the current county name okay and if you run this code uh, you will have an error so let's run it <laughs> okay uh, the error is because it is not supported between the integer and also string. So the reason is because the v1, the first variable that they returned, is not an integer. So it is in a string format. Okay, so we need to do one more step. We need to convert the v1 from string into integer. Okay. And now we should be good. So now if we say print uh, the max county and also max population. So let's put that one outside of this if statement. And we don't need to print uh, each individual record. OK, uh, so that is the max county. All right, so now we have the Firefox Virginia, and that has this number of the population. Okay, uh, so we are not done yet. So um, we need to use the uh, string format to report the result. So by using string format, so we can bring those uh, into a sentence that we can make the result more uh, readable. So let's say we put print a string. So the curly bracket county has the most population and a period and also dot format and we put those two variables within this uh, format method. So the maximum county will going to replace is going to replace this pair of the curly bracket and also maximal population number will be replaced in this curly bracket. That is how the string format works. So now let's run it. Okay, we can see, okay, the Firefox County in Virginia has the most population and the population is this one. Okay, so that's great. And now let's move on to next. Uh, so we can copy that. Let's go to 3.2. So we want to find a county with uh, the most male population. OK, uh, so the first one is with the most total population. OK, so uh, you can pause the video here and also you can think about that, how you can do that. Um, just give you a hint that you need to, if you want to understand those variables and you can go to the uh, the website that on this uh, on the instruction so here you can find out find out okay so the total population we used is this variable and the male population variable is this one okay so say if you can uh, find out the county has the highest the most male population on your own okay so here I'm going to provide my solution so I, I'm going to copy the, the code from this cell. So actually, the only thing we need to change is that this variable in this URL. So here we are looking for the male population, not the total population. So we just need to change this one to 2e. OK, so that will be the county that has uh, it will retain all the male population for all the counties. OK. And for the others, I don't think I need to change anything. I mean, uh, we can still use a maximal p as a variable and a max county as a variable to hold those, to hold the temporary 
the population of each county and also name of each county and also compare that one with with all the populations, all the male populations. Let's write. OK, and you can see it is still the Fairfax County and it has the most uh, male population. So that is about this number. So it is just about half of the total population. OK, so that looks like right. OK, and let's go to the our last question. So uh, that is three point or uh, four point three. So that has a highest highest male slash total population ratio. Okay. So that means that I want to calculate the ratio for all the counties and I want to find out the county that has the highest male population divided by the total population so that ratio okay and i hope that question is clear and you can try it on your own so based on those you know based on those examples uh, so can you find out that answer all right so here i'm going to provide my solution so still i'm going to copy this code okay so there are two things we need to change First, so we, we are looking for total population and also male population. So uh, let's change the URL a little bit. So that means that we want the total population and the male population. OK, so before we do that, so let's put those into comments. And let's just look at the, the first line of the retained data. OK, and now you can see now the structure has changed. So it has total population, male population, the name, state, and also county. OK, so that's great to know that. Uh, so now let's we need to change our for loop. So in this case, we need one more variable. So let's say V2. So V1 is a total population, V2 is the male population. OK. And now we can let's just put that into comment and let's print V2 as well and see if that is correct. OK, so let's look that looks right. So we have the total population and also male population for each single county and also the state name and also county name, a uh, state number and also county number. All right, so now we have the data that in the uh, in this for loop, but we are looking for two items in this for loop. So how can you find out the county that has the highest ratio? So that is uh, V2 divided divided by uh, V1. OK, so here I'm going to provide my solution. So instead of calculate the maximal population so we're looking for the ratio right uh, so let's put that one into command and let's move that one back okay so we can still use a maximal p as a variable but here instead we compare the v1 or v2 individually so we are looking for the ratio that is integer of the v2 divide v1 okay so we are not compare the population we are compare the ratio okay and finally so that this has a the highest male versus total ratio okay and uh, so we are we are still we are going to still using the stream uh, stream format. So okay, so the secret is that so in this URL in this API, so we are calling two variables. That's number one. Number two, we need to change the format in the for loop. So if you remember that it called unpack because we have we have one more variable. 
Number three, so we are not looking at the variable itself. We are looking for the ratio of those variables. Okay, and, and the idea of finding out the maximum values is still the same. And now let's write. Okay, and so now this time you can see the this county has the highest male versus total ratio and the ratio is this one. Okay, great. So that's all for this lab. So let's save this notebook. Okay, make sure we saved that notebook. And we can shut down this notebook. Okay, and now let's go to the lab. Uh, yeah, we see that lab uh, 11 is unchecked. So let's put that one to the stage. So, and also let's provide a uh, comment. So that is lab 11. Okay. JSON and sensors data. Let's commit. Let's uh, push that change to GitHub. Okay, so this is a little bit longer. Okay, that worked. Uh, so now let's go to our GitHub. So, and let's check that uh, the notebook that we just uploaded. Okay, so that is uh, lab 11. Uh, it is here. You can see this is up updated uh, by us. So lab 11. So here this is just one example and and 4.1, Fairfax has this population. 4.2, Fairfax has this male population. Uh, 4.3, uh, Gre Greensville has the highest male to total ratio. OK, so you can see it's very nice on notebooks that you can check. Uh, you can see the source code, and also you can see the result. All right, uh, so finally, so once you are happy with your lab, and also, you need to submit uh, the URL of your GitHub repository. Uh, once you're happy with everything, so do not forget to stop your in instance. OK, so by stopping that, so uh, AWS will stop charging your credits.